shame robs you of that ability and the capacity to bring change instead it makes you lose your voice and i feel like at the garden god was trying to make the man regain his voice by asking him where are you right god already knew where he was but god wanted him to open up instead of hiding come out from that hiding where are you he said oh oh god i heard your voice and i went to hide hi welcome to my youtube channel it's my delight to have you watch today's video i am um i want to speak from the topic shame is not from god from this part of the world that i come from there was a slang that i heard a few years ago god no go shame us and it is a slang that people used at least to have faith a positive expectation that no matter what happens god will not shame me i will not see failure the reality is that shame is not from god god himself throughout scripture i've scanned my own self maybe you can do your own research also and let's see who did god shame you want to talk about cain cain killed his brother god came to him and said where is your brother even when his offering was not accepted god said to him why are you sad you know and god was trying to create a conversation with him to get him to see himself and god told him sin is lying at your door and if you're not careful, it's going to overtake you. And because Cain didn't even listen, because of his, you know, arrogance, he responded to God even when after he killed his brother. I was expecting God to come to him and lash out on him, but God was still speaking with him in love. I have realized that God has never used shame as a factor to try to enhance change in our lives, whichever stage of our lives. Even when we were in the world, God doesn't use shame to drag us from the world to him. He uses love why do we feel shame shame could be a consequence of our actions of our mistakes or it could be orchestrated by the devil to destabilize us because it's actually a destabilizing factor why am i making today's video the aim is that you should not accept shame shame is not from god shame is not god ordained shame is not what god brings to you it's not a gift from god even when you make a mistake shame is not the gift god wants to give you i have a few points i want to make about shame here first of it is that shame is different from guilt and this is it while a guilty person says oh i did something bad somebody that is now engulfed in shame will say i am bad because now the person now personalizes the bad occurrence now i'm going to share a little of my story right i experienced this is a hard story to share though but i've shared it before I experienced molestation as a young boy and I could remember the shame that I felt. It was so deep that as I was walking on the road after I was being molested by this guy, I felt like everybody was seeing into me. I felt so dirty. Something happened to me, I was a victim of it, but then I felt like I'm so dirty. I felt so dirty. I, I blamed myself. I, I asked why me. But then I started blaming myself because shame brought in that blame. I said, you should have done this, you should have, could have done this, you would have done this. And then, you know, as I was growing up, kind of made fun of the fact that I was like, should I, would I, could I? The Celine Dion song, the popular Celine Dion song. I was like, should have done this, could have done this, would have done this. But I did not. I didn't do any of that. So then I took on the shame. I took on the blame. I wore it. I accepted it oh i would have done something to escape that but i was a victim so now this shame made me feel dirty this shame made me feel unworthy and that is it guilt could make you feel like you did something wrong but shame is going to make you feel like you are the wrong thing you are wrong it, you are the one that is wrong so that is just the first point without me digging in there the second point is that shame affects your self-esteem as a person the feeling of unworthiness is not from god the feeling that you do not belong here is not from God. The feeling that you should be a coward, you should always, you know, hide, go into hiding and oblivion is not from God. God made you with so much respect and the scripture says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So there are so many things that could bring in shame, but then the effects of it is what stays and lingers longer than expected. It could have been your past experience with your parents, with your step parents, or whichever thing, it affects your self-esteem. It starts making you do things and go into areas of things that you would naturally not do. It's not everybody that something happened to them. Some people were the ones that did something. Some of them did it in ignorance. Some of them, them did it maybe being influenced by something, alcohol or whatever, or being influenced by someone or a particular group and later 
feel humiliated for their decisions. So if you are part of those people that maybe you did something wrong, you did, you made a mistake and you feel humiliated and now you feel the shame of your past, of your mistake, the shame has affected your self-esteem. When shame affects your self-esteem, it always involves the awareness of how others perceive you. The next point is that shame also can be triggered by a real or imagined judgment from others. You feel like people are judging you for your mistakes, for what happened to you, for your lifestyle. So it makes you kind of engulfed in shame. The next point is that shame is one of the leading causes of suicide. This is one is a tough one. A lot of people give up in life because they feel like they don't deserve to be here again because they are unworthy. They have already given up on themselves. Their self-estimation of themselves has come so low that they feel like they are a coward. And the scripture says that God did not give you the spirit of fear or of shame or of coward eyes, but he gave you the spirit of power, of love and of a sound mind. Because sometimes this shame could feel like I deserve what I saw. I could have done something to avoid that situation or I shouldn't have done that thing. Now I would not be ashamed. But now you are in this place. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, you couldn't do any of that. So now you are in a place that you now blame yourself. You feel bad about yourself and you are tearing yourself down. And a lot of people because of this get to take their life. It is not something to say, oh, why should they do that? It is heavy. It's a heavy weight. It is a spirit of heaviness that just weighs down on you as a human being and brings depression and this anxiety. And that is why I say that shame is not from God. Since it's not from God, do not accept it. Do not remain there. You need to be healed. You need to get off from that place. Now, this happened in the case of Judas. And after Judas had betrayed Jesus, he regretted his actions. He said, oh, I made a mistake. He even took the money to return to the chief priest. They didn't take it from him. So he felt like he has done the worst and he went ahead to hang himself and the only thing i do say is i have a lot of compassion for him because i'm like could have been any of us if you were there don't think that you would have been peter even peter denied christ don't think that you would have been any of the disciples they all ran away judas only played a part to sell him and took money but then had it been he waited the lost compassion and mercy was so much that he would have been forgiven but then it was already designed in our lives, there are so many things that can bring shame, but that shame is not from God. So you don't have to take your life. The next point is that shame can be triggered by failures, rape, abuse, or addictions. Sometimes you can get so addicted to something that you are ashamed of yourself that you cannot stop it. You don't have the power to handle everything that happens in your life. If you get addicted, maybe something pushed you. Maybe a deep pain or heart within might have pushed you to be, to be addicted to something, to substance, to alcohol, to drug, to sex, or whichever addiction, pornography, masturbation, something must have pushed you. When I was addicted to masturbation, after a while of sitting in that place of being addicted, I didn't thought about myself. Something must have pushed me here because I didn't just come here naturally. And I realized that all the things from my past, contributed to pushing me to find medication and I felt like masturbation was a place where I could have control. I was the one in charge. I was the one you know, doing whatever I wanted to do with myself. So I had a, a level of control and I got addicted to it because there was a shame in my past that made me feel like I couldn't have control over the situation that happened to me. So because now I now masturbate, I had a, a level of control. So it, it eased temporarily the feeling of that shame but then it brought in more shame because the addiction was not ever meant to be a thing that healed me i needed to find healing and deliverance not to find you know a medication for my pain or my shame for some people that were raped it wasn't your fault you were just a victim so now this shame could be triggered Maybe you listen to a story of another person being raped. You listen to a story or maybe how people are dealing or talking about people that have experienced this kind of thing. It can trigger shame. And I want to let you know this shame is not from God. The failure that you must have experienced in your life, the shame of it is not from God. And it doesn't mean that that failure is fatal, that you always fail. The next point is that shame can be triggered by a negative self-evaluation or unhealthy self-criticism. When you have a sense of inadequacy or unworthiness, this can trigger a lot of shame because you've already had a negative self-evaluation and you don't really see yourself as someone that is, you know, worthy of anything good. So you have an unhealthy self-criticism. 
you don't deserve anything good you are inferior you are now in a place of shame because there's nothing to be proud of in your life whatever triggered the shame doesn't mean that is your identity you have an identity in a god who loves you now you can see from genesis account how god responded to shame this couple our first parents adam and eve they disobeyed God and they failed. So they experienced this failure. And after the failure, you had seen that immediately it pushed them to shame. It triggered shame. They were ashamed. So they run to hide. Now, scripture says in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 8, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I hate you walking in the garden. So I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. The first reaction was, go hide. Because he was naked. What brought about the hiding? He was ashamed of himself. He was naked and ashamed. And there are so many things that happen in our life, exposes us, and we find ourselves naked, unworthy, and inadequate. So now we are trying to fill up this empty space. But it's only God that can fill up that empty space. Adam had failed. He went to hide. And then this verse, God did something to them, and the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. That is in verse 21 of that Genesis chapter 3. It means God covered their shame. Had it been I was the one in the picture, being in the position of God, I would have said, Well, since you decided to dishonor me, even the small fig that were covering that they were covering themselves, I would take it away from them and be like, Of course, this is what you deserve. Let me remove this fig. So that you'll be ashamed of yourself. Maybe if you are ashamed of yourself, you regret what you did. But God knows that shame will never take us to any positive place. God knows that being ashamed of ourselves will never lead us to any place that will become healthy for us. Instead, it's going to lead us to a place of negative self-criticism. That is going to lead to depression and humiliation that might lead to suicide and every kind of wrong decisions. And now I say this to say that shame is not a catalyst to bring correction. Shame is not a catalyst to enforce change. Love is. The reality is that shame is a thing that you embarrass someone and uncover someone, uncover their fault, and know, speak their fault to their face, tell them their fault. Shame robs you of that ability and the capacity to bring change. Instead, it makes you lose your voice. And I feel like at the garden, God was trying to make the man regain his voice by asking him, where are you? Say something. Because I know you are running to hide. God already knew where he was. The God wanted to him to open up instead of hiding come out from that hiding where are you he said oh oh god i heard your voice and i went to hide that's vulnerability because i was naked and ashamed of myself so god wants to give us back our voice god wants us to have our voice back if you have ever experienced shame in your life or if you are experiencing shame right now this is to tell you it is not from god God will not shame you if you are afraid because ex having experienced shame in the past can make you so afraid of failure and then you are like, oh, I might experience shame again or I might experience this again. God will not shame you. Shame is not from God. The one you are experiencing right now and the one you are afraid of in the future, when you align with God, knowing that this is not from God, do not embrace it, but embrace healing for your soul, for your spirit, for your being. And this is my advice for parents, please. Not insulting you, but then telling you that you can do better. Do not use shame as a tool to try to correct your children. To try to create change in your children's life. It does not yield the desired result. Instead, it does the opposite. You are actually making them incapable or incapacitated to be able to create the desired change that you are desiring. Because the shame is now bringing them to the lowest place that they feel like they are inadequate to do anything good. So just like a parent that tells the child, you are still waiting at this age, na 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 na, and all those <laughs> like singing, all this failure upon the, the child's head. And the child is like, oh, since you people decide to make me ashamed and sing it over for the neighbors to hear, I will keep on doing this. Somebody that's on the ground cannot fall again. Some people can do that, even though it's not healthy. But others may not have the ability to do that. But all I'm saying is that it does not bring you to a place of change. Instead, it makes you incapacitated to create change. 
and you should know that you should not use this in any space that you are don't use shame against people because that is not from god if you are a child of god don't use shame against people it is not from god god does not use shame so you should not instead what does god use god uses love the bible says that love covers a multitude of sins there's a way you love someone and you empower them now you can see in the stories in the bible of how jesus handled people that were to be shamed the woman at the well must have been so ashamed of herself that she could not go to fetch water with the women other women the time that they used to go fetch water so she had to go in the middle of the day and jesus fixed an appointment with that woman to tell her this shame i'm going to take it away today fixed an appointment meet the woman meet with the woman that is in john chapter 4 and then had this conversation with the woman to get her to have a voice to get her to talk and then she talked and he did not condemn her he loved her instead and even complimented her you have five husband and the one you're living with is not even your husband not married to you yet complimented her telling her the truth in love and that empowered her she said no you're a prophet and she became an evangelist could have a voice to go call a whole community a whole city to come see jesus that was jesus empowering her in also in john chapter 8 we see about the woman that was caught in adultery the man dragged adele and said today we're going to deal with you to show me no one here what you want to be committing adultery anyhow and this and that but where was the man the man was not found jesus said any of you that is perfect cast the first stone to show you the nature of humans you that is trying to make somebody ashamed to shame somebody else you have your own dirty linen and all of them went by now jesus the only man who was able to condemn her and shame her did not he could but he would not shame her he was the only one remaining and he told her where are all thine accusers and she said none he wanted her to have a voice god wants to give you your voice back the shame is not your identity god wants you to have your voice back you are not that shame you are not what you've been through you're not what you've gone through this is my encouragement to you if you're experiencing any kind of shame in your life it is not god's will for you to remain there healing is your right you can claim it you can approach god you can go for therapy you can walk the walk don't be ashamed you can actually get your power back jesus empowered this woman caught in adultery and said i too have not condemned you now that empowerment was then where he told her go and sin no more the gift of no condemnation was to empower her to go sin no more when the church and christians try to use shame to point out people's fault we are not operating from love i'm not saying we should literally try to hide the fault because hiding the fault is different from covering the sin covering is an intentional act we are not trying to expose you for the whole world to see your nakedness but we know about it we are not hiding it but then we are protecting you the covering is a protection so god decided to protect that woman through his son christ and then the scripture tells us generally now there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus because of what christ has done at the cross there's no condemnation for you for your past for your mistakes for your faults for your failures instead of condemnation there is love for you thank you so much for watching today's video and i hope that this video will empower you and encourage you to go after god deeper and deeper it is my pleasure to have you watch this video and i hope that this video will empower you and strengthen you strengthen your faith and make you get your voice back from every shame that you've experienced amen